Good morning, everybody. You are tuned to Computers 2K now on the Nissan Communications Network. I'm Amnon, your host for the next couple of hours, along with Mike. What's that hanging off the back of your head? Right here is the uh, the end of the uh, shoot the um, earphone. Yeah, I mean earbud. Is that okay. What you, is that what you're talking about? Did that when I, I don't know. I head? saw something hanging off the back of your head. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hi. The what? Hi. Hi. And Nick is here. Uh, I guess I think so. I don't know. Yeah, you are. Okay. And Spence. What's going on over there? Looks like you're having a problem. Uh, well, we had a problem. I mean, we may still have a problem, but we'll see. We. we We'll talk about it in a minute. Um, our number is 919-518-9773, Computers 2K Voice on Skype. And today's show is made possible by VMX Software, Telestream's Wirecast Software, and is sponsored by Tom Sinclair of Live Streaming Gear. By Tom Sinclair of Live Streaming Gear. What was that? Don't worry about it. Uh, um, I still think that I've got my sources with Firefox messed up, and that may be why you heard me really loud, or you still hear me loud. No, you're fine now. Well, fine. when I when I put down the Hangouts, I still heard the noises from your end. So I'm obviously not on the right. Input. So how long have you been doing this show? I'm well, not... look, I mean, well, this is now, this is now here. Here goes. This is now the first show I'm doing with Windows 10. And there are changes there. Then this morning when I started the show and put the Hangout in, I can't capture it. It won't capture Chrome. So I tried and I reboot and I do this and nothing. Then I tried to capture the whole monitor and it worked so then i said well i wonder if it's is it i i now i'm beginning to feel bad again about windows 10 because with windows 7 everything worked okay but I okay was, okay but hold on you only have like four sound cards on the computer so it's, yeah i one or four i sound i cards. i know and i was so really, really it really doesn't have anything to do with the windows 10 it's just well sound as far as i'm using. concerned i may the changes that i'm making here are windows 10 and windows 10 is causing Something not so Windows 10 is causing you to have the wrong sound card. Will you let me finish? Ah, uh, okay. So okay. last, I mean, in the last few, what, two, three months, I was going back and forth between Windows 10 and Windows 7. I would not, not on a show and not on production, but on trying, and things were not working right. So Nick, just like he's doing now, is keep telling, kept telling me it's not Windows 10. It's something to do with all your sound cards so i'm going back and forth and back and forth and nick is right it's not windows 10 but the way that it's in here it's what changes am i making i'm making changes i'm going to windows 10 i can stay with windows 7 everything is working great so i'm blaming windows 10 so this morning it's i can't capture chrome and I said, let me see if I can capture Skype. Sure enough, it captures Skype. So I said, okay, so it's not Windows 10. That's good. I'm feeling better again. It's got something to do with Chrome and how things are working here. So I put Firefox and 
had to to the, the, with Firefox for some reason the the input Mike here here comes the input I have as hangouts for the input for the output I have only one option and it says the default uh audio device whatever it it doesn't I mean you can, I can click the that, down that arrow. probably means the audio is looping through which is why it was distorted Okay. Well, I, 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 I don't know what to do at that point. I really don't. Well, what you do is you get, the first thing you do is you always get the problem worked out in windows and then you worry about the applications. If you get, and don't start clicking on stuff, don't click okay. on it. Okay. Don't click on anything. But what, what you do mm -hmm. after the show is you make sure that windows 10 can see every one of your sound cards as you expect it to be seen. If Windows is not seeing the sound cards correctly, nothing else works correctly. Okay, yeah, I did. I went and looked, and all the devices are there the same as they were. And I have a Hangout in and Hangout out, which is the input and the output. But I don't see any of them in Firefox's, uh, in, in, the, in the gear of the Hangout under Firefox. When I'm Probably in the gear. Issue. Huh? That's probably just a WebRTC issue. That's okay. That's what I'm thinking. Because in under under uh, Chrome, I went in Chrome, even though I can't capture it, I see them all. So it's okay. I mean, as long as people can hear us and hear you, and you know, yeah, it'll it'll work out. But this is part of, I guess, my frustration with Windows 10. <laughs> Stupid Make Windows 10, always breaking everything. Always, it's always, yeah, it's uh, always. That's right. Always. Yeah. always. Hey, I'm not going to get it figured out by the time Windows 16 comes out. Yeah, that maybe. Good. Or 18 or 19. I'll be looking at you from up there and say, oh, look at Mike. He's trying to figure it out. <laughs> be far behind you. <laughs> Damn, right. I had a little play date yesterday. I had went over to the uh, co-located data center, which... Uh, Amnon, which was a skeleton of what I imagine it used to look like. Yeah. Uh, what was there, Amnon? About six racks in there that were being used. Yeah, it's it's uh, there. There, the, people are dropping out of there for some reason. I have no idea Christ. why. I don't, it may be. I mean, you know, why don't you, you would, tell people what you're talking about. The the data center where all the uh, Delta forces. All, where I have my rack with Delta Forces servers. It's over at the uh, level three uh, data center down, I mean, yeah, down there off of Capitol. And it used to be full, but I, I may have not seen that there were some empty racks. I mean, a few of them ahead of us. We are right by the window and we are like the last one in that room. And there was a company there that had seven racks, big company, big company. Don't want to mention names right. and they're all gone. A lot of, there, there are a couple so, of reasons for that. One is because it's time Warner, their prices are too high. Number two, because a lot of the reason that you would pull these racks over there, you couldn't put them at your house because you couldn't get or afford the same level of internet connectivity right. that they provide and share among their customers. Correct. It's a shared resource, which only makes sense for smaller companies. Third, because of the availability of local internet bandwidth, it is possible that some companies are actually moving servers in house. Yeah, or to the cloud. It's screwing house. I mean, you can get. Well, this would be the cloud, though, wouldn't it? No, 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 not no, because that the, no, the, if you were still, it's your servers you're managing them. I mean, you can move your service to DigitalOcean for, you know, a fraction of the. If they're just storing data, which yeah. I'm sure a lot of the, a lot of it is just data, um, that's pretty inexpensive to store online. But the bottom line is, it's it's they're petering out. I mean, the room. Oh, that's, yeah. that's that's what. Nick was saying, he said, it, it's a skeleton. It looks, it looks really, it looks empty now when you go in there. And so I at mean, some point they're going to call you and say, Amnon, we've decided to shut down this location. I, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want them to get any idea of what's going on. So let's stop talking about it. And we, they hate we, you. yeah, they hate me anyway. So yeah, Nick was here and Nick brought me, Oh, I left it in the other room. Shoot. Brought me in. an NAB koozie from. Uh, Tom Sinclair and I actually called Tom yesterday, Nick, and told him thank you. 
You, you did say that he gave it to you to give to me, right? Yeah, I mean, it was at his event. Yeah. yeah he didn't yeah. I don't believe he personally gave it to me, but. Yeah. So, what else is going on? Uh, Spence, is, he did send the uh, uh, specials, and he said he's going to be here about 10 o'clock. Mother's Day activities over there. So, yeah, yeah. we forgot to say mo happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Well, my mother's been passed away in 1978. Yeah, but she's watching you now. Well, we hope so. They, they, they have uh, you verse. So Jean is wanting to know how can I get Windows 10 notifications stopped forever? And he said deleting Windows 10 doesn't work as it keep keeps coming back on its own. And he means Windows 10 Assistant. I'm still not sure what he's talking about. Are you running Windows 10 or are you running Windows 7 and you want to get rid of the update to Windows 10 notifications, Gene? Because it sounds like the latter. So what? It sounds like the latter. The I the agree. It sounds to me like, what is it? No more 10 or no 10 or something like yeah, that? Yeah, whoever makes that. Oh, that was GRC. Oh, yeah, it is a GRC. I shouldn't be surprised. If it's, I'm assuming it still works. He means the Windows 10 assistant, so he must be running Windows 10. Oh, if that's the case, I don't really know what. I, I can tell you that if you got, if you try to turn off the Windows 10 updates, that's a mistake. Oh, I agree. They're gonna, they're gonna pound you until you make you do it. I don't. Somebody may come up with a hack to get rid of it, but there could be unintended consequences. I mean, I'm all for not doing updates that are new or could harm your system, but oh, I mean, the whole, th this is Microsoft's biggest problem. We talked about this extensively when we were dealing with the free upgrade from seven or eight to, to 10 was if you don't do the updates, then your system is vulnerable. Then Microsoft gets hacked and it's the PR of, oh, look at this, Microsoft Windows, unsecure, not safe. Everybody's getting all their stuff stolen. When in reality, it's just people not doing updates, which is a tough problem for them. And I mean, Apple, you know, it, we, we don't talk kindly about the Mac all the time, but you don't have an option. on. There's no way to stop the update on iOS. Mm. On the phone, the computer, there's no way to stop it. In phone. You can keep clicking later, but eventually you, it will install. Stop so. it from, well, actually, Spencer says there's a way to put it in developer mode that you don't even get pinged on the phone. Oh yeah, you yes, you can you can put it in developer mode, but I just I I, I don't know. I, yeah, I think you have to pay for that. You have to have the developer account. Um, but you know they they've got that figured out because they understand that if people are running various versions, that there's there's issues. It's so. not that I object to the automatic updates, but I do object to two things on automatic updates. Number one is them and pushing them whenever they want to instead of whenever I want to. How many times has the radio station been off the air because Microsoft wanted to make sure you had the latest update? The, the second problem I have is whenever they push out these untested updates that break things. Yes, I'd agree with that. But no, I, I think the operating system has to be kept up to date. I've been listening to this small market radio podcast, which is a dreadful, dreadful podcast. I mean, it's, if it weren't, it, it's one of the, well, I won't get too deeply into it, but there's some useful information that the, with the guests, they had a guest on for some reason who was no more than the IT guy talking about the various things we talk about here. And, uh, and one of the things that he said that I believe is correct is that, that we don't think about is that whenever you get a notice of an update to your operating system, you need to install it as soon as possible because there are already people trying to hack in, but, and it's automatic based on IP address, <clears throat> and they're already trying to hack in based on beating that patch for the vulnerability. Absolutely. And he says, if you think that just because you're, it's just you at home on your own home system, you're not vulnerable, you're crazy. They scan the whole network. And I know that to be true. There are some firewalls where they actually log the, the, the scans on your system. It's pages and pages and pages. Of course, it's just Russians. Mm -hmm. I am wondering if Facebook 
is blocking blocking us from um, streaming now why because it will not it 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 looks something something doesn't look right and it will not stream and i can't i can't click anything in it well i'll tell you this wow. my wife who is conservative made a post on facebook was just her political opinion, not unlike many, many others that were already there. She got a notice that she had been flagged for inappropriate content. Well, I mean, uh, uh, Facebook, wait a second, let me just do this. Uh, Facebook did change their, uh, their rules or whatever. And, Right now, if you are streaming, uh, starting last Monday, if you're streaming anything that they deem to be copyrighted, they uh, they take it off and they don't don't allow you to stream anymore until if you, you can dispute it and all that. And we were talking about it with, on. They were talking about it on. Uh, streaming idiots, Tom Sinclair's uh, show, and the thing, the the reason is that they, unlike YouTube, they don't have a way to say, okay, you have copyrighted uh, material in your video. The copyright holder is getting the monetization for it. So they don't have to take it off. They just pay the copyright holder, and then you dispute it. And when your dispute is settled, they, if there was any money, then they give it to you and they release it. With Facebook, they don't have that mechanism yet. So instead of getting sued by the copyright holder, they just take it completely off and don't allow you to stream anymore. And the reason why the, the, there, there are different, different ways that people are looking at it. One guy said that he, they got a notice from Facebook that the copyrighted material was a countdown clock that they were using before the show, like to say, okay, uh, another nine minutes, another, that was copyrighted by the Olympic Committee or whatever. Oh yeah, the Olympics will screw you real good. You can't even. Uh, excuse me, sorry, I don't even believe you can yeah, say their name. Fine. Yes, yes, you can. So uh, <clears throat> I have a free one they can use. <laughs> well, there's a lot of free one. I mean, this it, it, it's it, the, the nothing is clear. They don't tell you exactly why or where or what. Apparently, and here, I mean, I never got a notice. I just oh. I just tried to stream it to Nissan Communications instead of Computers 2K now, and it's still not going. So they are stuck because it's under one account. Under well, no that that's actually that's actually good that you're saying that. That means you're not blocked. They're not under one. Those are individual pages. It might be a Facebook issue. Those pages are not linked in any way. I don't. I, I don't. I, I, well, they are under are my account. Yeah, but that's I have but, to look. Log in as me and then choose which page I want. But we're all administer. I mean, that's just yeah. as much my account well, as it is yours because we're, I believe you and I are both admins on that page. Yeah. So I, I would say it may be a Facebook issue this morning. Well, but either way, this is a big problem and we're going to have to deal with this. And you, you and I were talking about this yesterday. Um, for, for my day job, we do a Facebook simulcast of one of the radio programs and that's got copyrighted yeah. music every, in and out of every segment. So that's going to be another wonderful issue I'm going to have to deal with. Um, how to pro and and if you remember, if you're a Leo Laporte fan, um, you remember a couple of years ago, he had to come up with a solution for recording his radio show and podcasting it because his radio show has got um, copyrighted music because it's 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 a radio show. It's produced by Premiere. Um, so he has a a special mix, a special submix of his 
program that he records for his uh, Leo Laporte, the tech guy show that doesn't include the music because his podcast was getting ding. And Lim- Limbaugh does the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Limb- Limbaugh does the same thing. Um, so that's a, that's a, one of the quote unquote solutions to the problem. Okay, here, I just tried it again, and here was what, what it says. It's a vMix error, yeah. Check the stream settings, such as URL and key, are correct, and try again. Mm-hmm. Uh, FFmpeg exited, exited streaming, and it gives some statistics about the stream. And really nothing, it says output error. So that's very interesting, and you can't capture it in order to paste that. Uh, oh well. Well, while we're talking about Facebook, as I've mentioned here before, one of the shows that I like to watch on TV, even though it's NBC, is a show called Dateline. They've, they've been able to do a pretty good job of keeping the politics out. You, you can watch them and sort of figure out which one of their morons will get into it. But for the most part, they do a really good job. I watched one recently that I won't tell you the whole story. Well, I might, cause you probably won't go watch it, but you can watch the whole thing online. I just posted the link in in chat and it's uh, the, the episode is called one spring night. Natalie Morales speaks to the mother of the teenage sexual assault victim from St. Paul's school. New details from both sides of the case. Owen LaBrie's conviction and sentencing and interviews with LaBrie's friends and legal team. And what happens here is this was a 2015 story. I don't know what the latest is. I probably will need to look it up. But uh, the guy is accused of a whole bunch of stuff, which uh, if he's guilty of it, he should be punished. If he's not guilty, he should have been acquitted, but he was charged with about four things and he was ultimately nailed on one at the time. And the point is that it was all based on his use of Facebook. He was, he's a sex offender for life because he contacted his quote unquote victim through Facebook. Hmm. That's in violation of a federal community uh, of the federal uh, oh, I forget what the name of the act is, but you, you cannot use the internet for illegal purposes or some nonsense like that, which I, I'm, I'm just telling you, if, if, if you're interested in that sort of thing, if you want to see what an 18 year old, what kind of trouble he can get into by using Facebook, I believe that if you're one of these people afraid of your shadow, if you watch this episode, you'll never again allow Facebook in your house. And I do believe that there's some I, I do believe there's a lot to the story that Facebook can be dangerous. I mean, if you look and see what happened to this kid now, granted what happens in criminal prosecutions is if you're charged with four things and they can't get you on those four things, they're going to try to get you on at least one. And if they have to make that one fit, sometimes, unfortunately they'll do that. And in this case, if, if there had not been the use of a computer, the kid probably would not have been convicted or may not have been, I don't know. I don't, I wasn't there. I don't, I don't just wholesale buy into what I see on these TV shows. I'm just going by what I saw, but I will tell you that it would be cause for concern for having teenagers using Facebook. Yeah, that's it's an added reason to worry about Facebook. Correct. And there's Merle three Oh back from Hawaii. Or maybe he's there. <laughs> no, he's back. All right. So let's see what else is going on. Um, This is, this is an interesting article here. A survey compiled last month at the RSA security conference reveals that most companies are still behind with proper security practices. And some of them even intentionally ignore security flaws for various re- reasons, ranging from lack of time to lack of know-how. The survey, which compiled answers from 155 security professionals from the companies present at the RSA conference, revealed that only 47% of organizations patch vulnerabilities as soon as they are known. 
most worrisome is that some companies wait quite some time before applying patches, exposing their IT infrastructure to attacks. More precisely, 16% wait for one month, while 8% said they only apply patches once or twice a year. And uh, Ma Mike, uh, you just said, if you think that stopping the updates on Windows 10 is a good thing, it's not. Look at look at this. I mean, Windows 10, what, it does it every three months now or twice a year? I don't know how often they do uh, it. It's, I mean, my the big, Windows the 10 big is every week. Can you imagine companies doing it like that because they don't have the time or lack know-how and we're using them? I mean, think about your bank that you're going that you're doing online banking or any, anywhere that you go, you, you, from that article, you would say, oh, well, you know, then they screwing themselves. No, they're not just screwing themselves. They're screwing us because we, you don't know which company that you're going on, on the web to buy stuff from, to, to report something, whatever, that they are actually updating their infrastructure. And by you going there, you may be exposed and that data will end up somewhere else. That's I think bad. That's, I, I, I agree. I think that's probably more catered towards smaller companies like the one I work for. And I, and I mean, I'd make, I could easily say that, you know, do, do we, do I even see that we've got updates available? Most of our equipment is 24 seven update or excuse me, 24 seven on. Um, and there's other people using the system. So if there's an update message, it probably just gets closed out. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think it's the most uncommon thing in the world. Well, I hope somebody like Wells Fargo is doing their updates or whatever, but don't be too sure. I uh, no, I mean, I'm not. I mean, they, they've got their handful of issues and not just them large companies. They, they, it would seem that they would have all the resources available, but, but even within these gigantic companies, the budget woes, even within a single department can be really problematic. Tony says oh. Windows 10 really is junk. Okay, well. Well. Back to. But that means we're all junkies. And Merle is, is yeah. saying, though, that if you have 10,000 PCs and hundreds of servers, but the fact is that if you have that many PCs and that many servers, you mean, need, need an adequate number of people to be able to maintain those servers, or you're going to have. Let me tell you, this. this while we're on the subject, particularly if you have a European presence, if you have 10,000 PCs and hundreds of servers, I'll bet you you've got some involvement in the European Union, which absolutely unequivocally submits you to the jurisdiction of the regulatory authorities in Europe, meaning that starting May 25th, if you have, if your servers, if one of your servers gets hacked, the information, the personal data that you've collected from people residing in or visiting in Europe if that information is hacked, the penalty is is either the greater of 20 million euros or 4% of your company's gross revenue. Whichever is larger. Larger. <laughs> mm. That's why, uh, who was it? Facebook or YouTube? Somebody moved their operations Facebook. from Ireland to California. Yeah, Facebook. Was it Facebook? Yeah. And Apple, Everything. I think, moves some stuff too. So we'll see. It's going to be interesting to see. We've spent, or my company, we've spent the last month meeting daily, preparing for it to make sure that we're taking all the steps we can. We don't, we're not even sure we're affected by it, but no one's willing to gamble that until it shakes out over the next few years. Yep. That is safe than sorry. And then you got these government workers who won't do a darn thing to keep stuff running. Stop talking about Nick. I wasn't talking about Nick. <laughs> that would be great. And talking about security, in an advisory to employees, IBM Global <clears throat> Chief Information Security Officer said the company is expanding the pr practice of prohibiting data transfer to all removable portable storage devices. USB, SD cards, flash drives, and so on. The advisory stated some 
pockets of IBM have had this policy for a while, but over the next few weeks, we are implementing this policy worldwide. Big Blue is doing this because the possible financial and reputational damage from misplaced, lost, or misused removable portable storage devices must be minimized. IBMers are advised to use Big Blue's preferred sync and share service to move data around. Makes sense. This way you don't end up with a with a USB drive that you left, flash drive that you left on, on the bar somewhere, or somebody stole your uh, car and in it there was a drive with stuff in it. That that is security. Yeah. It's tough though, man, I'll tell you. If you just try to move something quick and it's like, ah, oh, you gotta go through this damn yeah. Yeah. But 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 the reality is most people would not complain if there was an equally competent way to do something. People are looking for solutions, not particular solutions in most cases. In this circumstance, if this other system is user friendly, integrated well, it works well, I doubt anybody would complain. They would even appreciate the service. I was reading a post or an email or something recently from someone who was complaining that the company had locked down their computers. There are certain things, I forget what exactly what they were, that they would not let them do. They could not, I'll make these up. This probably wasn't what it was, but it was something like this. They were not able to print certain things. They were not able to to copy things to USB drives. They could not. There are just certain things, certain in, it was just standard functions of Windows that were now blocked because the company wanted to be secure. And, of course, they noted that it did not apply to the corner suite. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know anything about the, the sync and share, uh, but there was nothing... No, no, there was nothing negative said about, told or reported about it. And the bottom line is you have to do what the company says to do, right, Mike? Absolutely. Yeah. And they have the right to do that. Absolutely. But they also, they're, it's really unfortunate when they're too stupid to realize that if you have unhappy employees, you're not going to get the best quality product out of your company. It's, it's just not going to happen. You might get productivity, but it's not going to be top. You agree, Spence? Absolutely. The good old pendulum theory where you, you, you swing back and forth. We have high quality and high costs, and then we have low quality and low costs. It's, it's got to do with customer sat. It costs us a fortune. We can't afford to maintain that. So they swing all the way back the other way where they cut back on customer support and they lose money. There's no, it's the key is to stay in the center somewhere. And, and employee satisfaction, the companies, it just amazes me how they, they think they can treat their people like crap and get a top quality result. I mean, it's, I just talked to my, my brother-in-law whose son worked for Amazon, who just resigned because of the way he was treated. And he's taken a bunch of time off and going to come back to New York. He was working in California and uh, it was just the, the way they were treating them was just this is Amazon. This is one of the supposedly respected companies and they treat their employees horribly. So mm -hmm. there, there I go. My account's going to be, my account's going to be canceled. <laughs> well, that'd be all right. I, they've just raised prime to one nineteen. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not renewing was, mine. Yeah. Nick, you were talking about that. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, and, oh, they, they have a great marketing ploy, by the way. If you go to your Amazon, uh, if you go to amazon.com and you're logged in, Mm -hmm. There's a pop-up on the screen that says, oh, you saved $300 last year with Amazon Prime. Trying mm -hmm. to make it seem like you got some great freaking deal with, uh, with Amazon Prime for only $100. I'd like to know how they calculate that savings. No, that any, item you order that, that you, any item you order that you don't pay shipping on. I mean, I guess that's how they're calculating it. Nah, it's just the random number generator. <laughs> <laughs> you saved $2 million, but I only spent 50 you save two million. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I'm. I'm going to keep it. Oh, I'm because not because it's. Kathy's using the video. And 
No, see, see, I would agree. If I was using any of the other services, I totally keep it. But that's my biggest yeah. problem is I, I don't find any of the other services useful. No, definitely yeah. not, not for the purpose of, of free shipping. That is absolutely yeah. ridiculous. I mean, no. And you know, this is great when you think about it for talk about how brick and mortar stores can compete like a Staples or an Office Max or a Walmart or whatever. Most of them, if not all of them, and I know Walmart does, they offer free two day shipping on or free, you know, two or three day business shipping on, on almost everything they sell. So you now, now, you know, now instead of just the, oh, order from Amazon, order from Amazon, maybe it will people start, including myself, looking around at other, uh, other services. For a while, for a while, I was buying auto parts from Amazon because I go to the, the place that if nobody knows about rockauto.com, it's it's a great store, but they charge for shipping. But the key is to consolidate everything you want to buy into one order mm -hmm. and then you save on shipping. But I, I was going to Amazon and searching for part numbers. And for a while, it was better. I was getting free shipping and the price was the same, or which was hard to match. Rock Auto's prices are great. But now you go to Amazon and I can't find those prices anymore. Uh, they've either cut back on the third-party shippers that they're using, because they don't actually they don't actually sell any of this stuff. Pretty much, it's got to go from from partners. But I've gone back to using Rock Auto to buy uh, bulk parts. Uh, Two to three day shipping is the typical standard. The base, the base, or I should say, three to five day shipping is the base starting point, and then you pay more as you go. And it's typically either FedEx or uh, USPS, depending on the part and who who the drop shipper is. the 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 thing is that if you are paying one hundred twenty dollars for the okay to to occasionally save and get free two day shipping, the way that I look at it's like you traveling all the way to the other side of town. 20 miles to save two pennies on a gallon of gas when you buy only 10 gallon. But Amnon, you don't understand if, if Amazon misses my wife ordering two days in a row, they send someone by here to do a wellness check. <laughs> uh, that's what they tell you that they are doing. But believe me, if you look at your camera, that's not what they're doing. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> Never mind. Let's not get into that. I have I have customers that have their garages are filled with Amazon boxes. Just how many would you like to have? <laughs> I've got a, yeah. I got enough to start a shipping business. Yeah. Hey. Yep. 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 All right. Anything happening in the chat that we need to pay attention to? Well, this is, I really do hope that, just, just could, wrapping up the Amazon thing really quick, I really do hope somebody like Staples or Office Max or whatever, Best Buy, really, uh, they need to do a serious marketing campaign that they offer free shipping because they do literally on everything they sell. It's not just them because I saw some yesterday when we got back, I was looking. And if you, when you go to a website, if you start looking for something to purchase, Pay particular attention. It's starting to pop up more free two day shipping. Now where they get you is that there has to be a minimum order, which mm -hmm. is higher than Amazon, but you're paying for that differential. You have to stop and think about how many of those purchases that you make are between what, what is their minimum? Like $6 for free shipping for small items. Oh no, it's. 25 or 35 dollars 30 no no for with prime you can oh. buy an item for six dollars with free shipping because in essence you're paying for the shipping with prime yeah something like that but but if you're going to 25 or over then it's for 35 or whatever it is is free shipping i i do some stuff in fact i have a question here i do i do same day shipment from time to time on things as i understand it that if you don't have prime that adds 5.99 for same day yeah same day is expensive well, if you need it, you need it. I mean, you, yeah. and this is what Amnon was talking about. You, you think about it. Do you say $6 for same day delivery? 
let's say it's for a hard drive. You, you're working on a hard drive. I'm at the office all day and I want to get home and fix a computer with a hard drive. And so you, you think about with gas hitting towards $3 a gallon. And if you're true wear and tear on your car and what your time is worth, Six dollars to have it delivered to your house that day is is not a big deal, and if you're charging the other guy for it anyway, and they're willing to pay it, then who cares? Right. Right. I, look, here's what's happening, in my opinion, and and I don't totally fault Amazon for having to do this. They have been a victim of their own success. They have too many people using Prime. They can't keep up with the orders. That's why they've gone to two days is now three days. And in some case, four days, they want to get rid of it. They, they don't want as many people using prime. They cannot ship the orders. Yeah. I find myself using Amazon less and less in the past six months. And what do you, what, what other resource are you using more than Amazon? Walmart. It's so close to where I live. I mean, it's. So you're going over there and actually buying things off the shelf. It's four tenths of a mile from my house. I mean, it's literally across the street. I just, I mean, it's just easier for me to hop in my car. Now, the only thing is uh, electronics obviously aren't available. Um, right. But for literally, like I had, I needed a, a coffee bean uh, uh, grinder because I'd purchased some coffee and it was still, it wasn't uh, grinded. I needed to get a grinder. I looked at Amazon and I said, screw it. I mean, that'll take, it'll take two days to get here. And I've got to fight with the, the front office to make sure I get there around their time, whenever the hell they're open, which is, you know, typically until five o'clock, which they've got a locker down there Who? Amazon. Yeah. But it's not anywhere near, it's not anywhere near where I am. It's but my more. point is I've got, you know, it's just, it's more of a hassle for me to order something from Amazon than it is to just drive over to Walmart, pick it up, do the self scan checkout, not talk to a single person and leave. Does Walmart still offer a discount for in-store pickup? I don't know if they still do a discount, but I know the Walmart near here, um, they have in in the front of the store, they've got this big orange, it's kind of like a partitioned wall and it goes on and it goes about three quarters of the way up the, the, it's a, it's a freestanding structure and you order things online and they place it in this little thing up front and you just walk in there and I think you either scan a card or put in a code and you pick up the item. They had that in our hmm. store for a while with a, bit, a bunch of lockers. Yep, yep. And they took it out and now they have a like a, a kiosk desk with a person manned there all the time to bring out the stuff from apparently they just didn't have enough room. Yeah. The, and I saw a guy, the other day I was waiting online to return something and I see somebody walk up and literally the guy gave him a, a, a little came out with a little bottle of looked like a bottle of antacid or something like that. <laughs> It's like, really? <laughs> well, John made an interesting comment. He said, Walmart offers free pickup on a lot of items that they don't stock in the stores. They do. It's called site to store. It takes free about two pickup. days to get it. Uh, okay. So he's saying that you order it and then pick it up at the store. Well, I knew about that. I thought he was talking about maybe they had items <clears throat> in their warehouse space that were not being displayed on the stores because what a lot of people don't realize is that sh- uh, shelf space and floor space and a store are considered platinum resources. And Spencer, when you're talking about they had these these lockers, they took them out and went to a manned or woman desk. Yeah, it was probably pursuant to one of two things. One of them being how much was the return on investment for the amount of floor space necessary to be able to put those lockers in versus putting that desk in that might be multi-use or for have other purposes. It's yeah, it's right. It's right in the customer service area. Major retailers have a very, very finely tuned calculation for return of value on floor space and shelf space. I was just in a Paris Teeter the other day and they have really ramped up their, well, they've always had order ahead and they've got their, coolers in the front for your order you can come pick it up now it's take it out to your car and you've got to literally have a queue like waiting for the uh, drive-up window where cars are lined up on the queue to pick up their uh, order and they have a bunch of runners that go in and grab the stuff out of the chiller and bring it out to the car i mean uh in with the home depot and lowe's it's the same thing 
there are yeah, they have their pickup places. And yet I still see people pull up and, and park in front of the door when they could park in the pickup spot. That's literally 20 feet away. Mm -hmm. But they still will pull up in the no parking zone in front of the store. Don't I have never done one of those store pickups. I haven't either. So which ones? The grocery ones? Any of them. The grocery ones are very convenient. I, I found out that it's a lot easier to order stuff from Home Depot. Like the other two weeks ago, I, I had to get salt for our water softener. And I went in and I chopped around. And it was actually, if you buy it online and you get so many, I think 10 of them, it was a lot cheaper. So I went ahead and paid for it and everything and got an email and went down there and said, do you need help loading it? I said, sure. They came, they loaded it on the pickup and that was it. So, but uh, shopping there, they, now that I want to build out, to build a, a little shelter outside, there are certain things that they don't carry in the store. And it's, I guess it's because of what Mike is saying, you know, uh, the shelf is, shelf space is very expensive. And it's weird because they are available in other stores. But they always said that we will ship it to your to your store for free pickup. So, okay, but in in your situation, I'm not. I mean, you're about 14 steps away from Home Depot, but so I mean that's. But that that's not the point. The point is that that you can have it, and I mean, if you if you go there and you need to pick up sheets of uh, plywood and 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 studs and all that. It, it takes time when you sit at home. What I do is I go and I go to Home Depot and I go to Lowe's and I pick up the same thing and I add it to my cart here and the cart here and add and add and add. And then I see where's the better deal. And I delete everything from the other one and I place it. So I know that when I go there, everything is ready. So whether you close or not, the point is, Picking up at the store. I mean, look at Nick. He he shops for food that way. I mean, yeah, he can go in the store and pick up what he wants, but it's um, it it saves you time. I mean, you spend the time here at, in front of the computer to to find out what you want and pick up exactly what you want at the right price and everything, and then you say, okay, I spend the time. I don't know how the stores are going for it because the stores want you to come in and walk the aisles and maybe pick up things that you don't need. That's what we yeah. talked about before. Yeah. This this pickup gets rid of impulse purchases. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I was just thinking about how like Nick goes and buys food that way, but he knows what the food is. He's been in the store to see it and he's tried it. How do we deal with generations yeah. in the future that never set foot in the store? How would they, they just see a picture of a box of whatever it is they want and they'll buy it. It's just, uh, they're you know, capitalized. They're capitalizing on people's likes and what they want. How in the future though, how do you convince Nick, people? How do you market this stuff to people? Nick, the future generations won't be shopping in stores because it's too time consuming. They'll get, eat everything yeah. out. They've got to get back on Facebook. But if yeah. robots are going to do everything, they'll have plenty of time. No, oh, oh, you know, you make a good point that, and I don't, to, to, to be fair, I don't always order that way um oh no it's, it, i'm just saying it's it's for you it's convenient you know what you want yeah it's typically once a month when i have to get a bunch of things that at one time i typically tr i typically go to walmart i'll go to walmart after the show today to figure out what i'm going to make for dinner for a couple of days but i mean it is very convenient for for larger shopping cheeseburgers no 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 cheeseburger. <laughs> but for a larger <laughs> shopping venture it, it, I, I like the online order it's funny. I never thought to buy paper towels, for example, online, but my kids all do. They have yeah, to, to the door. I, I, it's like, well, I go and I buy the brick yeah, in the store. Yeah, you better but, check the price of paper products <clears throat> in store. <clears throat> excuse me, in store versus online. Yep, talk about a racket. Which which one with the racket buying it in line? Tissue. 
No, you have to, it, it, it varies. It's not usually one, it's not always one or the other. I mean, if you go look for the price of Kleenex, the name brand stuff on Amazon, you can buy it for about half that price. Costco free delivery to your house. They don't even carry it in the Costco store. Hmm. Yeah. We buy a lot of it. Yeah. I'm rethinking we buy a lot of the case. How that's going to work. Amnon, when we have all this leisure time, we'll have all, you know, we'll be able to do all the shopping. Right. Talk about yeah. leisure mm -hmm. time uh, in shopping. Do you want to do specials? I can. All right. And I will. I, I'm sad to say that I did not have time to do uh, a fries ad today. Oh. I was kind of, kind of pressed for time. I made, I, you know, I was assigned all to right, make so it. So never it. mind. Yeah, no, I got all the other retailers here. <laughs> Oh, well, then just forget it. I'm leaving. I'm going outside. In the garden right. and eat worms. Yeah, I know. I, I still have. I started to do some things, ladder work yesterday around my own house. And I uh, ran into some things where I have to make some repairs on the gutter guards. And I, I still have to go back and finish that today. Is this really an ad from Skype? I don't know what who made it. I don't know if it's an I black and white. Says, no, that's like doesn't say. I think it's somebody created it. Oh, okay. just as a you know as an as an art artistic thing. Okay, it's pretty clever. But I've seen this this type of format before, and um, for for similar products. So I think it's somebody either a graphic artist or something who's creating it. Hmm. It's it's kind of it's kind of clever though. So, all right, Computers 2K Now specials for May 13th. And we start with laptops. Best Buy, if you're looking for a gaming laptop, you can save 100 bucks on an MSI 15.6 inch Core i7 for $14.99.99. Amnon, get us each one. Yeah. I could, okay. I could probably use two of them if, if that's okay. I like the uh, light backlit keyboard, multicolored backlit keyboard. It stimulates it stimulates your brain to see all the colors. Office Depot has a Lenovo 17.3 inch IdeaPad uh, Core i3 for $549, which is $170 off. Staples has a Core i7 laptop for $599, uh, $200 off. Mm -hmm. Uh, Best Buy has an Alienware Aurora desktop core i7, 16 gig of memory for $14.99, save $100. Bucks. Office Depot has a Dell i5 desktop for $4.99. That's $180 off. I think, it's, I think this one is 12 gig of memory. Um, and at Staples, we've got a core i3 HP slimline desktop. Uh, eight gig with one terabyte hard drive for three sixty nine, which is eighty dollars off the regular price. I'm actually doing research for an aunt and uncle in Florida who are uh, being tasked with buying the new round of computers for their public library. So I've been putting together a bunch of recommendations. They gave me a price range and a, and a list of requirements. And this is one of the machines I'm recommending to them that they use. They have a a, a budget. And uh, this actually comes in under budget a little bit, and it's it's it will do nicely what they're hoping to do with these machines. Uh, tablets at Best Buy, we've got an Insignia 10.1 inch tablet with a detachable keyboard for ninety nine dollars eighty off with a detachable keyboard. Office Depot has a New Vision uh, eight inch Android tablet for fifty nine ninety nine. That's twenty off. This is the same product from last week. Didn't seem doesn't seem to be a lot of originality this week with uh, Office Depot as far as their ad goes. Maybe those people are on vacation. Uh, and Staples has a an iPad 9.7 inch silver 32 gig uh, for 279, which is 50 bucks off. Networking, why go why go cheap when you can go ex more expensive, right? Uh, Asus AC 3100 dual band Wi-Fi router. Uh, the more antennas, the better, right? <laughs> it has to be better if there's more antennas. You just can't deny it, right? Two twenty nine, twenty off. There are people that love these. These are great for uh, uh, households where you've got a lot of people streaming, and you've got uh, features that are built into this. But don't forget, you still have to have 
a comparable AC technology card to achieve to to achieve that 3100 speed. You got to spend some serious money on it on an adapter uh, to match to get that kind of throughput. It, it will still help all your Wi-Fi needs to have a, a router like this, just because of what it does and the way it functions around interference and um, congestion. Um, but to get the true throughput, theoretical throughput, or even close to it, you've got to have matching. Both ends have to be talking at the same capacity, put it that way. It's like having a, you got a, a, a one foot uh, size water main and a half inch pipe coming into <laughs> your house. You obviously can't get the same flow right. of water into your house if it goes to a bottleneck. So Office Depot has uh, not on their regular sale, a uh, Amplify home Wi-Fi system. This is by Ubiquity 349. And what's unique about this is it does have some built-in tools in the base station. Uh, for tuning the throughput. So it's not just a uh, ubiquity makes good products. We know that. And uh, it's a little bit on the expensive side, but if, uh, if you'd like to put in a, a very intelligent system in your house, this is a, this is a good product. I'm not saying it's a good price, but it's a good product. Uh, Staples has Google Wi-Fi AC 1200 dual band whole house Wi-Fi. Now this is the, this is just the base station. This is the one that connects to your Ethernet. This is not the repeaters that go out. You can add them, but if you if this if your environment is small enough that this will serve you well, you don't have to have satellites around and repeaters around the house. This is a good way to start. You could start with this and add another one if you had uh, coverage issues. But one nineteen, which is ten bucks off. Western, uh, I'm sorry, Best Buy has a Western Digital 4 terabyte USB 3.0 portable hard drive. This is half price. It's normally 200 bucks. It's on sale for $99.99. If you do have a, a need for a large storage device that's portable, this is a really good deal. Um, Office Depot has a 32 gig USB 3.0 flash drive for $12.99, normally $27. And if you're looking for an entry level, Solid state drive. Uh, Staples has on sale a 240 gig PNY drive for $64.99, which is $25 off the regular price. Boy, the prices of this stuff has come down. Isn't that amazing? Remember what they were when they were first introduced? Nothing entry uh, about the PNY. PNY makes a lot of the other ones. Well, they're, they're, yeah, they're one of the, they're a manufacturer and yeah. brand. Yeah. Yeah. Been around for a long time. Mm hmm. Uh, accessories, we've got a Logitech uh, Orion Spectrum G910 gaming uh, keyboard. Uh, it's $114.99, which is 65 bucks off the regular price. Don't usually get into software, but uh, they didn't have a lot of accessories that were, were uh, of interest today at Office Depot, but they did have a sale on uh, Corel Paint Shop Pro. It is a pro still a popular program. It's not uh, Photoshop. But if you need something that's uh, um, good functionality, lower price, been around for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, $59.99, say 40 bucks. And uh, Logitech, uh, I'm sorry, Staples has a Logitech wireless full-size solar keyboard. <laughs> this is what you need if you spend all your time outside. At the beach. At the beach, that's right. So um, I guess that means that uh, you'll never buy another battery. I don't know. Nah. I mean, it's solar has to charge something because if, say, you're sitting in your office and you're working and the lights go out for some reason, the key does the keyboard stop? It's got to be charging a battery. So yeah, yeah, interesting. But it's uh, sixty nine ninety nine, twenty dollars off the regular price. Uh, the price of curved monitors continues to drop. Uh, Samsung. A uh, 24 inch curved FreeSync monitor at Best Buy for 149.30 off. Office Depot has a 27 inch Dell monitor for 149. That's 100 off. And Staples has a 24 inch monitor for 99 dollars, which is a uh, hundred dollars off. Printers and scanners. Uh, Best Buy has a Canon Pixma entry level. Uh, All-in-one inkjet printer for $44.99. That's $55 off the regular price. If you're looking for a way to 
create labels, brother P-Touch style labels, printed labels, without having the actual printer device keep with a keyboard on it, you can get this P-Touch Cube label maker, which will work with your smartphone. And it's $49.99. Uh, Staples has an Epson Workforce ES400 duplex document scanner. This is a sheet-fed scanner, which is nice, and you can uh, send documents through and automatically read, uh, scan both sides of the document. Uh, it is $279, which is $70 bucks off. This next product, you can see by the orange band around the B, is that this is not from the weekly ad, but it is on sale. This is an interesting device. Uh, Pet Cube Play. This is a, a, a webcam that is specifically designed to work with people who have pets at home during the day. It has a built-in laser pointer so that if you have a cat and you can set it, that it will automatically play with the cat at certain oh. times of the day. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> or I, I, I couldn't find if you could actually control the thing, but you can talk two ways to your pet. And but it has programmable functions so that it can <laughs> give the pet playtime. Well, why don't we just use this for people too, right? Sure. Leave your child at home in the crib <laughs> all day. Just, oh, every I was oh, how are you doing now? You know, you here. Let me let me run the laser pointer on the wall and amuse you for a while. But it's uh, one forty nine, say fifty bucks. Mm. I mean, for if you have a pet that can be left at home, like a cat. I mean, obviously a dog. Be tough to have a dog at home for eight hours. And I know people do it, but uh, this might be an interesting way if you have access to the internet and can check on the pet during the day. Amnon, this is perfect for your turtles. Yeah. Yeah, you can put it outside. In the pond. Oh, it's waterproof too. Oh, great. Oh, and you put it in the water so you can actually talk <laughs> to the turtles yep. when you're not at home. And run the laser pointer around. Do, 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 do. Why not? Hey, you know. Um, and closing out, home automation and security here, we have at Office Depot. Uh, we've seen this product before. Again, there was not a lot of exciting things on Office Depot's page today. Night Owl 4 gig surveillance camera that looks like a key fob. Now, understand that this is not going to work if it's in your pocket. <laughs> 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 oh, I bought this great surveillance camera. Looks like a key fob. Hey, yeah. Robert, yeah. look at through my key fob. Yeah. <laughs> Why yeah. are you holding that and pointing it at me? <laughs> <laughs> you got to be clever with how you use it, right? So, uh, oh, boy. Why is a key fob sitting on top of an upside down uh, Starbucks cup? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, no. It's just the way I like to keep my keys out in front of me. Yeah. Um, $36.99. And finally, uh, TP-Link smart Wi-Fi wall switch, the HS200 model at Staples for $32.99, which is $7 off the regular price. And that is it for Mother's Day, May 13th, 2018. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. And the picture on the, on, the, on the first page of the robots in the boardroom, that is the future of business. Uh, let me bring it back up. It's a picture of the, our, our leader on the, in the background there, the live picture of you monitoring. <laughs> but notice what's sitting on the table in front of them. Floppy disk. Floppy disk. Eight inch. Or is that yep. a five and a quarter? Looks like a five and a quarter based on the label. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Board of Directors meeting. I had an interesting thing happen this week, and actually, I learned of it this week. It happened a few weeks ago. My daughter's laptop computer was stolen. Oh. She had it backed up by with carbonite. We did. Well, I've never used carb. I've, I've set up carbonite and had it working, but I've never. I, I don't really know that much about the inner workings of it. One good thing about them is, if you call them, not only will they will they talk you through it, they'll even log in and do it for you in real time, which I like that aspect of it. Their customer service I found to be excellent. Mm -hmm. However, based on what the guys told me, they will only, if you have a, let's say that you have a, an SSD for your C drive, you have a large data drive for your D drive. You have to pick which one you want to back up. 
They, he told me, I said, now, I know you don't back up external drives, but internal drives, you only back up one. He said, yes, I I'm not, I'm still not positive. That's correct, but I'm positive. That's what he said. And uh, I said, well, that's of no value because I maintain a small C drive, but there's still things on it that I want to have backed up that you, some applications don't let you store them where you want to store them easily. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just the way it is. So I went on Twitter and, <clears throat> and, and, and lamented about it and said, I'll have to check with Backblaze because I think they won't do that. Backblaze responded to me, nope. And they don't Backblaze. You can, it's the same price or if not cheaper. And with Backblaze, they you can they'll even back up USB drives unlimited. They don't care how much it is five dollars a month. I no longer recommend Carbonite. I am now recommending Backblaze. So they don't offer incremental backups of. I thought that automatically goes out and backs up anything in your documents folder. I don't know. Do documents it, is on your C. It could. I know, but what what good is a one time? No, no, they will continue doing it only on one drive. That's only not, on that's one not drive. Entirely. That's not. Oh, yeah, I understand. But oh, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. What are you saying, Nick? That's not. I mean, both of my drives are both backed up. I have. Just, you, just you just have to man. You have to manually map the second drive to be backed up. Yeah. Yeah. And you paying one fee or you? Yeah, paying absolutely. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm on my Windows. I'm. I just pulled up my Windows uh, file explorer, and I've got. Uh, an orange circle on my local C drive and on my D drive, which means elements of both drives are being backed up. And when you say mapping, you mean you mean within the Carbonite app? Correct. Yeah, you just not, if you right click on share if you drive. right click on any folder in Windows with Carbonite installed, you can click on. Uh, what are they? What are you, they? You can a, you can tell Carbonite to to do the default, and they'll do the folders that they know about but then Correct. you can go in and you can say no i don't need this one but i do want this 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 yep. this and this so on my d drive which i've also created documents downloads i have the documents folder backed up by music folder pictures programs videos and websites nothing else on that drive is backed up mike and he told you that they do not period they do not back up more than one drive that's what he said they don't do complete now that that is correct they won't do a complete secondary drive but you can manually yeah. select what folders you want backed up so in my case i've got one two three four five six seven eight i've got eight main folders right on my d drive that are backed up and then there's hundreds of folders within those the reason i was asking the question is because i paid for my daughter's subscription but now with no computer she has she doesn't need the subscription i said well why not go ahead and use it on this computer we had to install carbonite on my main computer the mm -hmm. one i'm using now to be able to restore her files back to my uh, to a hard drive so we put them on my secondary hard drive completely restored all of her files which they were not all there of course but enough that it w there's not a whole lot to panic over. But uh, having said that, and of course, we didn't want the person who stole the computer to figure out how to log in and delete everything in Carbonite. So we changed the passwords and all that. But you never know what you're going to get into. I said, well, why not go ahead and use the subscription here? And I'll back mine up because it, obviously something can happen here. And that's when they said no. It's in here now. Carbonite is installed on this computer, but it's in the recovery mode, which means it freezes the backup. Nothing. Oh, that. Well, that is correct. You cannot have somebody else's data backed up and then start using your computer to back up. It will only store one computer's worth of backup at a time. Correct. It's like, but you can move it to a new computer, which you is can. what we did. But it, but you have to delete the old stuff. No. no. That may be part of your problem. No, there's not a problem here. I don't have it. Oh. I haven't tried to turn it back on, but the guy, <clears throat> the guy's telling me that that no, you this is now the authorized computer for that data. They verified the identity and all that. Yeah, that data okay. now belongs to this computer. The other computer no longer exists. Yeah, I tried to they, log into it through TeamViewer. It never connects. So either they're not using the computer, or they have figured out not to use TeamViewer, or they've the, wiped it. The, uh, yes. Carbonite will not allow you to back up a second computer unless you pay for it. Correct. Correct. I mean, this is not a second computer. It yeah. is a changed yeah, primary right. computer. So if you look at that picture I just posted, that's those are my, both of those are both of my drives, and those little the orange icon means that some of the contents are right. backed up, which is exactly what I want because I don't. Well, it means all that. not everything has been backed yeah. up, but it and I did on the main, flagged. 
Yeah, and I did on the second drive when I installed it. Had to go through and manually select those seven or eight main folders to back up, and then all of the sub inside of it, all the subfolders are backed up. Well, I'm going to look now on my F drive, which is my six terabyte drive on this computer. Let's look at file here. Nothing here is backed up. If I go to a wave file and right click on it, let's see. Here's Carbonite. And if we click on back this up. This action is not allowed while it's frozen. So yeah, that, I mean, that seems to be what I recall yeah. is that you could manually include other things, but that's not what he said. Cause I questioned him on it, but he, who knows what he was thinking. Yeah, you absolutely. Yeah. You, you so the, yeah, you can, you can, you have one main drive and then you can back up files from a secondary how internal many, drive. How many internal drives? I don't know. I've only, I only have two. So that's all I've ever been able to be unlimited if it's an internal drive. Cause that's, that could even be partitions unless actually, it, no, I think it's yeah. only two because it doesn't let you do network drives. I tried that before. Now, well, neither, neither Backblaze, as I understand it, nor Carbonite will allow you to do network drives. And I'm okay with that. I mean, that but could it, get ridiculous. Yeah, no, I agree. But I'm saying it, it's interesting because it's this, the Windows sees it as the same thing. It's a mapped drive path. Drive W is a network drive. Well, they, they can tell the difference. The application can absolutely tell yeah. the difference. Yeah. So and, I don't know. I just, I, to me, why not do back blaze? They've been around long enough. They're credible. They should be in good shape. They, they certainly are. I, I haven't had to use their customer service, but I will tell you that the, the, the next one I'm going to set up will be back blaze, not carbonite. You, you're not going to even try to call them and talk to them to see what kind of attitude they have toward customers i mean because like like you said customer service is is a big chunk of a decision making when you do these things i mean you want to know that if you have a problem you have somebody to talk who would support you and all that so and on you're the only one i know who calls all these companies yeah. nobody else has got the time or is willing to invest the time to do that all right so i'll do it yeah you do it but because i'd like to know i don't want to recommend them if they're a bunch of creeps no, but every I'll time I've, I've had any interaction with them, even albeit on a limited basis, it has been excellent. I mean, these guys go to the trouble of publishing their experiences yeah. with hard drives to help you figure out which kind of hard drive you want to buy and put in your computer so that you don't have a hard drive crash and you don't need to use their services. Right. Go back. You said the interaction that I had with them, even on limited basis. What do you mean? Oh, every time I've asked a question, they've been very responsive. Oh, I've had, we had a situation, Nick, we installed a, we set up a Backblaze account for a commercial company to set up, to back up their sys drive. What is that thing called, Nick? Uh, B2. Oh, what is it? No, no, that's the blaze service. But what is the drive? Oh, the Synology drive? Synology drive. Mm -hmm. Their backup, their cost is a dollar and 75 cents a month. I believe it's still working too. It, I hope so. Since you've got personal liability on that. No. <laughs> but so uh, I, I, I just, you know what there, this is an old, old fogey thing. There are certain people that are on your team and certain people who are not, and they just seem to be more on the team than the carbonite guys. Cause during this, during this process, Whenever my daughter's computer was stolen and I logged in, you go to the website. You can actually, like with Windows Explorer, you can browse to see what's on it. There was nothing on her desktop. There was uh, That's not true. There was one encrypted file on her desktop. Whenever we did the restore, everything that had been on her desktop was gone. It turns out that what the, the file she was looking for was under documents, and she thought it was on her desktop. It turned out to be under documents, which was her password file. We were able to take that file, go through and change all of her passwords on the, there was only about 10 websites that she had passwords saved, but we went and changed them all there. And none of them had been breached that we could tell because it would show last login, all that sort of thing. Maybe, maybe the file on the desktop was just a link to the other folder. Well, it could have been, work. it could have been, but she would not have known how to do that. Yeah. I, I recently, I, I try to do this on a regular basis, go through my desktop and get rid of any files that are actually sitting on the desktop and put them into folders and link them to the desktop. Why? Because it, it saves memory. When you're looking at your default screen, it, it takes up more memory to have actual files sitting on your desktop than it does if they're sitting in the links or in folders. Hey, Mike. Hmm. Uh, 
Do you care to discuss how it was stolen? No. Okay. Um, this is. Yeah, we have stole it. This is also interesting here. The Federal Communication Commission said in a notice Thursday that the 2015 U.S. Open Internet rules will cease on June 11th. Because the FCC in December repealed the Obama era net neutrality rules, allowing internet providers to block or slow websites as long as they disclose the practice. I've never heard that before. As long as they disclose the practice. The FCC said the new rules will take effect 30 days from Friday, last Friday. An FCC spokeswoman confirmed the new rules will take effect on June 11th. A group of states and others have sued to try to block the new rules from taking effect. Uh, the revised rules were a win for internet service providers like AT&T and Comcast, but are opposed by internet firms like Facebook and Alphabet. So I, I thought that that neutrality already went out the window. Well, it, it, it's it's not until June 11th. Um, and yeah, there was already ended. So I don't really understand. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, there are there are some states who are suing and uh, ridiculous. And Mike, this is uh, this is this is interesting. It's no secret that sales of vinyl music are at the highest in decades. Even the lowly cassette tape is regaining popularity as some millennials embrace analog music over digital downloads and streaming services. But for the first time in more than two decades, a German company is reviving what may be the ultimate, the ultimate format, a new reel-to-reel -reel tape machine. It says that a Dusseldorf-based Roland Schneider Precision Engineering this week will introduce four ball finger reel-to-reel -reel machines. Any of these names mean anything to you, Mike? I, I know what you're. I know the article yep. you're talking about. Bringing back a technology that dominated professional music recording for most of the 20th century and is now making a comeback with audio audiophiles and artists, including Lady Gaga, The Slick Machine, Hogwash. some of them customizable. Hogwash. They'll retail, they'll retail from about 9,500 euros, which is 11,400 for the basic version, to about 24,000 euros for the high-end model, which features three direct drive motors, an editing system, and walnut side panels. Wow. Digital media is great, but experiencing music is more than just listening to the sound file. It's sensual. It, it's reels that turn and can be touched, said Roland Schneider, the machine designer. When it comes to audio quality, nothing else in the analog world gets you closer to the experience of being right there in the recording studio than reel-to-reel -reel tape. I'm going back to all uh, Edison wax cylinders myself. <laughs> uh, that's the first first recording medium. I'm just I got to yep. go back to basics. Well, so my, I mean, what do you want to know? You want the whole scoop? Yeah, sure. All right, the whole scoop is if you're if you grew up listening to a certain sound and you like that sound. All sorts of newfangled things can come along and you may not ever like it as well, but there is so much BS going on with this whole revival thing. I mean, let's, let's just look at sheer numbers first. Number one, let's suppose that two albums were sold last year and that, all of a sudden this year it's 20. Yeah. Well, guess what? <laughs> By booming, it's increased a thousand yep. percent in sales. That's right. The numbers are insignificant. Number one, number two. Analog has never gone anywhere. There are recording studios in Raleigh that are all analog to this date. There is a guy in Sanford who has 
almost one of every kind of analog tape recorder you can get. He's an engineer. They're up to date. He has kept them maintained. If you've got an analog tape that needs to be copied, you can go down there and do it. I've got a freshly restored reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder sitting up three feet from where I am right now. I can, I've got enough reel-to-reel -reel tape to go from here to the moon. The third problem you run into now is all of the, except for a few manufacturers, you can't get decent reel tape to go on a machine. Uh, that's, that's an issue that has to be dealt with. There are some that are made by some companies here in the United States. Maybe the, the it, it's kind of like, bringing out a certain kind of gun. If there are no bullets for it, it really yeah, doesn't matter a whole worthless. lot, but yeah. there is tape and you can get tape and there's new old stock tape and so forth. So there, there's that issue, but the, the most fiction and, and even vinyl is not going away. A buddy of mine up in Virginia has his own cutting lathe. He's been pressing albums nonstop since the eighties. He has not stopped doing it. There is also a group on Facebook for real to real enthusiasts. It's very active. There is even a group on Facebook for cassette enthusiasts. They're very active. When these people go on there and talk about the awesome sound of this cassette they just got off of eBay, I just shake my head because cassette stinks. It's one and seven eighths inches per second. It's limited in frequency response. It's limited in wow and flutter. It's limited in signal to noise ratio because of track width and tape quality mass duplicating techniques. That's nonsense. But probably the ultimate laughable aspect to this is that the many of the, the vinyl, many of the vinyl releases now were recorded and mastered on digital media, meaning that it's only one step in the one link in the chain. Mm -hmm. The other thing that uh, is important to realize and what people need to, if they were honest to what they would tell you is that if you really like the sound of reel to reel tape, and I do, I prefer it in one aspect to digital, but the reason that Gary and I prefer it like the Otari 5050, the reason I prefer it is because of a flaw or a limitation in the system. And what it is, is that tape is a magnetic medium. It will only hold so much energy and then it saturates. When it saturates, what that means is that the increased volume does not cause uh, that you send into the machine does not cause an increased volume going to the tape. It saturates. It starts limiting. It starts cutting off the peaks. That's called, uh, it's called compression. It's magnetic compression because of the tape, tape saturation. And it turns out that we like the sound of tape saturation. There are plugins and devices now that will simulate tape saturation and give that same sort of sound that we have grown up on and have liked. Case in point, for example, is that back when we were growing up, then bands always hauled around Hammond B3 organs. They'd give you a hernia trying to carry these things around. <laughs> and, as, and I own one. And people say, well, there's uh, the, these new electronic ones. They're pretty good, but they just don't simulate. They just don't master the sound of a B3. Nonsense. You go into a live environment, you could take a B3 cabinet, put an electronic keyboard in it, and nobody would know the difference. It's There's a lot of fiction, a lot of brain disconnect going on with a lot of these things. All that being said is that if you think you like vinyl and you want it, Go get it. Absolutely. All, all for it. In fact, if you want to pay a premium price to buy some sealed albums from the 70s, call me up. I can hook you up. But having said that, it's there's a there's a lot of fiction out there. There, I mean, it's remember that people are going out and paying nine hundred dollars for wires to connect their amplifiers to their speakers because they can hear the difference. And it's just a nonsense. By the way, talking about cassettes. I will tell you right now that the, one of the real benefits with, of cassettes was remote recording and playback. Now, digitally remote recording is, has cassettes are useless for recording compared to the quality and the comfort you can get making a digital recording. But right now, and, and this is a situation that we ran into with the radio station. If you want to go out and play a demonstration commercial for an advertiser, 
in the old days, you copied it to cassette. You threw this cassette into this neat portable player that had a large speaker on it. I mean, I've got one right over here. Gary knows what I'm talking about. The, the a lot of us use the Panasonic, the Tascam. What was it? I forget the other one. The the other one, but it's uh, Marantz. Marantz is the one I'm trying to think of. They, they were commercial models. They were fantastic. You go out and you hit the play button. You play the commercial, and it's great. Right now. I cannot find a device that I can put this demonstration commercial on and that Nick can take that device and go over to an advertiser and hit the play button and it'll play back. Cell phone. Some people are using cell phones and they sound like crap. I mean, I a lot of the, huh? I, said, I don't know about that. Have you heard well, the speaker on the new iPhone? They sound like crap. And, okay. and so what's a lot of people are doing, believe it or not in the radio industry is they're actually getting a Bluetooth speaker. So they walk in with their cell phone and a Bluetooth speaker so that they can get a quality playback and it doesn't sound like a playing back on a telephone. But, uh, but the point is that, that kiss cassettes had their, had their day. They were extremely useful for a lot of things, but, um, uh, the day is done. I mean, Gary says it sure is going to stop making phono cartridges. Okay. There are only about 50 others still making them. They, there's never been a shortage. Audio Technica has probably got one of the best ones out there. Sure is not necessary. There are too, there are too many people t- chasing too few goods. Amnon, you're talking about these new recorders for $11,000. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know what the current price is, but there's a company up in Pennsylvania called ATR Electronics. They buy, uh, they buy the used Ampex, which they're all used now, ATR series recorders, which were arguably the best recorders that have ever been made. They go through completely refurbish them. A two track machine that'll handle 10 inch reels at when I, last time I looked was $10,000 and people buy them as fast as they can get them. There's a waiting list to get them, but that's always been the case. I mean, they, if, if it won't play on an ATR 102, it won't play. I need to get in the attic and get the reel to reel tape machine that I have up there. It's probably all the rubber is gone. I'm sure it is. Yeah. And you can get these consumer machines all over the place for, for next to nothing, but a reel to reel machine is a, it's not as complicated as a VCR, but it is a very complicated Mm -hmm. piece of equipment. It requires highly specialized skills to maintain them. And even those of us who used to do that sort of stuff, we haven't done them in so long or so many of them that we probably are not as good as we used to be. And certainly getting the parts is a major challenge. Right. But it's, it's interesting and it's fun. I'm sure it's fun. But I mean, you know, you look at this, what? 10,000 bucks. Well, what are you going to do with it? Doug? Yeah, I if know, you're going to make a hundred with it, that's better than not that's, spending a 10 and not making a hundred. Yeah. But that's not, that's not a consumer consumer. Uh, no, thing. this is consumers do, do have no business screwing around with reel to reel. They have nothing to benefit from it. Right. All right. 919-518-9773 computers, 2k voice on Skype. Call us if you have any comment or if you want to ask any question. I well, just like recently it. tossed my cassette deck that I used to have for my TI 994A to record mm-hmm. uh, programming. Yeah, see, it was classic. You could have gotten a thousand dollars for it. Seriously? No. No, yeah, it was. Uh, it was the audio quality from the speaker was terrible. It was yeah. not meant to be used for. I still have audio it. Audio playback. I still have it, but it's uh, the I need a. a a belt for it because it's yeah, oh, the, the, the rubber. Oh, these oh. things will deteriorate in, yeah. in two years. Right. I mean, even this, this reel to reel tape deck that I, we actually made records on it back in the late nineties and it, it just sat and sat and sat and it deteriorated. It cost me 300 and I could have done it myself to a point, but there was some funky things going on with it. I sent it to a guy who is three months backed up to even work on a reel to reel machine. He did a, he did a really good job on it. In fact, he, he had some parts that, that had a bent spindle on it. He even had one from a machine that was destroyed that he put on there for no additional cost so that it straightened it all out. Uh, Gary says he's in the wrong business. Well, that's cause he's helping Mickey. <laughs> I had a Sony reel to reel with sound on sound, which was, I used to use it for basic audio dubbing. I, I put together, uh, 
uh, music mixes for a coffee house. And uh, it was a great machine. It was, uh, I, I don't even remember what happened to it, to be honest. Somehow it got lost in the shuffle. That was, I, that was, gosh. Yeah, years. I have that problem too. I had a bunch of test equipment in my old, uh, when, before I moved up here, I, including a frequency counter. I have no idea what happened to it. It's there somewhere. No, it's not. You'll find it when, when you yeah. least expect it, you'll see it. I, it. The problem is that it's been sitting so long now, it's probably dry rotted. I don't need it. I used to fix exciters and transmitters and things with it, and it was useful for that, but I really haven't needed it. And if I did, I'd go buy another one. I mean, if you look over my head over here, you'll see that I just bought a new, what is this? This is a, a function generator that I bought. I bought a B and K function generator. It's like, 200 bucks and it it does it does a lot of course and i also you can't see it here but i also bought a a uh, i forget the brand name on it potomac instruments ag51 audio generator which brand new was over two thousand dollars but they've been discontinued for 10 years they still they'll work forever I and mean, i bought one i think 150 bucks because I've got the, the analyzer that goes with it. It was a match set and I never had the generator, but I always had the analyzer. So I got one of those. Oh. Hey, Nick, oh, yeah. you have a Chromebook, right? Nick is not in front of his computer. Oh, well, Google announced that Chrome OS is getting Linux support. As a result, Chromebooks will soon be able to run Linux apps and execute Linux command. A preview of Linux on a Pixel book will be released first with support for more devices coming soon. So just go to wherever you normally get those apps, whether it's on the website or through app get in the Linux terminal and seamless get those apps like any other Linux distribution. Promo's director of product management, Ken Liu, told VentureBeat. So that that's nice. You that means that seems you, to make a lot of sense to me. Yes, it does. And it's nice. You're gonna be able to run I, Linux. I would actually buy one when when they do that, if it if it's not dog slow, I would probably buy one just to have something to play with Linux. Yeah, they're nice, they're light, and they do what they're supposed to do. So I guess if they they add Linux support, that means that they can handle it. And that that is neat. As long as it's not just command line. Well, they were saying here that the Linux term oh yeah, Linux terminal. I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, if it's terminal a command line uh, that it's not, I don't know that it's going to take off among the general population only no it has to be able to run yeah. GUI apps it, it can uh the, the Google announces at their developer conference this week or, or last week whenever it was um I had a Chromebook it was um you had I mean yeah I don't know where no, I, I, I'm pretty sure I left away. no I didn't throw it away but I I was trying to install I think I just tried to install Windows on it and I think I bricked it, and then I threw it away. Um, oh, he didn't throw it away. He threw it away. I threw it away. It was in now. It was in a non-working state, so I threw it away. Yes. Um, they're nice. Um, oh, honest no, to God, though, I think you'd probably be better off getting an iPad. I just got my son-in-law an iPad. They're nice. Telling you, nice. You know, we're the. I mean, the Chromebooks are are are, are very nice. Um, but. Something about uh, what we were talking about while you were out screwing off is that I, I heard I heard I had the speakers on. I was just making coffee. So I mean, for a, for a toy, it would be it could be worthwhile. Yep. Yeah. I mean, they're they're per, they're still pretty inexpensive, but I for and because I was just I was just on slick deals and Best Buy's got um an open box iPad. Uh, nine point seven inch, which I think is the is the full. I don't, I don't know if that's they classify that as the mini. Um, open box for two ninety nine. The latest, the latest 
a 32 gigabyte iPad, 9.7 inch iPad, open box 299. That's so, not bad. Yeah. No, it's not bad. And, and I mean, you know, this is the iPad and the Chromebook are set for, for all intents and purposes are pretty much the same thing. Now, obviously with adding Android or, uh, well, it already does Android apps, but adding, uh, Linux apps Linux kind app. of yeah. changes the picture a little bit for somebody that just literally wants to browse on the web and stuff like that. I, I, I mean, Mike, your wife has an iPad. I know she loves that thing. Mm-hmm. It's just, I think it's so much, it's nicer than a computer for browsing the internet. It's more convenient, way more convenient. In fact, I'm, I'm probably going to get one myself for for when I'm sitting like leaning against my pillow and uh, on the bed watching TV. I don't want a laptop in my lap. Yeah, uh, we've been discussing at work how getting how we want uh, salespeople to be interfacing with technology, and you know we've purchased these cheapo Windows laptops, and they're I mean they're problem they're they're slow as hell. So that's the first problem. But second of all, you know you can save files to the wrong place and oh how does that how do i download this how does this work you know there's just the problems of using a computer kind of go away when you get an ipad because there's no way to save a file locally to the device i think you have a little more user control over it as well yeah there's some Mm -hmm. some things about them that i don't like that's typical apple crap but you there's never going to be a perfect solution i guess absolutely so, uh, speaking of cell phones, oh. we are still fighting a problem with my wife's note Four. we can't get files off of it. Someone said to connect it to a windows computer, you would be able to do file explorer on the, on the phone. We tried it yesterday. It didn't work. It would solve the phone, but it did not show any files on the phone. Is there an app or something that you have to load into windows to be able to access the file base on a note Four? There's not an actual app, but there's some tools, some utilities that you can use to look into it a little bit deeper. How about into it at all? I, yeah, there is. I, I just tools. connected. I, I mean, when I when I was taking pictures, when I was taking pictures with the Galaxy Three, I would just connect it to USB, and it'll be beam, and it'll be a drive on. In, in Explorer, and you would this go in. Not doing that. And that's what I wanted because I wanted to find out where the files are. She's she's at 31.9 gig on a 32 gig phone. I would recommend you install ES File Explorer on the phone. Hmm. That's a, a very in-depth file explorer on the device. And then from there, you can move things around, send it to an SD card, stuff like that. I'm a big fan of ES File Explorer. That works on Android. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah, that's the Android file but It'll it'll show you oh, from the right. root directory up towards wherever you'd want to go. You just have you probably have to do some googling to figure out where if you're looking for a specific app or something like that. You got to kind of figure out where they store their user data. Um, John says on a Samsung phone, you have to specify that the connection is for file transfer, and not charging. How do you do? Oh, yeah, I do remember that. It should pop up. I and I'm wondering also if it has something to do with permissions. No, there's not permissions, but there is an option in the settings to, to, to I, I do remember that there, there's an option for file or charge. Yeah. I, I don't know why they've got that, but I'll see, I will have to get rid of some stuff on her phone to be able to install ES file explorer. She can't even send an attachment to a text message. Well, you just probably got to go through and delete. You need to go into the downloads folder and delete stuff. It ain't there. I'm telling you. It, I, it, no, I mean, no. In the phone itself. Yeah. John says, when you connect, an icon shows at the top of the screen. Which screen, the Android or the Windows? The Android. It should be on. It, it'll probably pop up a notification on the pull-down menu. Okay. I hate Android. I mean, I don't oh, like it's, Apple, it's, but I hate Android. It's an absolute joke. Absolutely horrible. And this stuff about you need to update your Verizon uh, storage space. You need to uh, Google play needs a, a permission to upload. I mean, it's just a, an abortion when you, uh, well, no, you can't back. <laughs> In fact, this is a good point. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to back up. She's got some things on there. Her father passed away last year and there are some things on there. She does not want to lose that. We're trying desperately to get backed up safely. And well, you go to the Verizon store and this moron says, Oh, well, we can't back that up for you without a court order. You, well, are, this is are, my phone. Are they pictures or documents? 
both. Okay, so what I would recommend and, and audio files. Okay, this is what I recommend you do for because that stuff's important. Um, she obviously has a Google Drive account because she has an Android phone. She's got a Google account that the phone is linked to. <clears throat> is that is it, yes? Yes, but nothing's okay. uploading to it. Oh, so find whatever the file is and share it and click share via drive and it will upload it to your Google Drive. Samsung has an app that copies all files to PC. Is that the one that's called Smart Switch, John? Because I am telling you that you guys have listened to this show a long time. You know that I'm not an idiot when it comes to most technology. And this one has me totally stumped. I have, I have picked it up, said, all right, I'm going to fix it this time. This has been going on since they did an update about two months ago. And I've even had people on other forum tell me, oh yeah, that's a pro common problem with Samsung. It doesn't show up in the, in the F Explorer and so forth. And you really need to wipe the phone and start all over again. Just make sure you have a good backup. Well, how the hell do I get a good backup? Oh, well, that's hard to do. I, if I can do file explorer, I, I think that there's some orphan files in it. If I could get rid of one or two large orphan files, I believe we could get things going again. She's going back to iPhone. Yes. Fox. Well, well sh you can sort things by size. Awesome. Yeah. So it's, a, it's, it's a little, it's a little, just make sure you don't delete. Just make sure you're very vigilant of where you are and what you're deleting. Cause it's very, I've accidentally on Android deleted stuff by accident with the file explorer. Cause it, I mean, it literally was, you can delete the Android directory, which yeah. will, for all intents and purposes, break your phone. Well, I don't know if, if gee, if you were ever up here, Nick, at a good, I time. was up, I was up there yesterday. That's, that's not true. Amnon back me up. Yeah. Okay, so Nick sends me a message Friday night. Are you around tomorrow? That's that's when I found out I was going to be around. So, and I was at a wedding where it was ninety nine degrees, and I was on a Ouch. curtain tie outside. It was it was hot out yesterday, man. That's that's hot. Some like it hot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Better than it being cold. So John says, "Have you cleared?" the app cache and and i have not done that three different verizon people have looked at it whether they've done it i don't know i don't know how to clear the app cache so to clear the app cache for an individual app you go into the app manager in the settings actually you hold or you can hold down on the app and click on properties and you'll have options like uninstall clear app cache and app data um but you've also got to be careful with that because clearing the ash cap and the uh, the, the app cache and the data you can you can delete the data of the app if it's if it's storing it there. Yeah, I I just find it a very very disturbing system to use. Oh, it is. It's 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 a it's a, it's a convoluted piece of junk, I and mean, that's Android. And that's the sad part because it we're not Apple fans because Apple's so good. We're Apple fans because the competition is so bad. <laughs> Windows. Well, I will tell you what my phone guy told me and. This is primarily from a hardware perspective. He said that the up and coming, believe it or not, one of the up and coming stars will be the Google Pixel. It, it will. Um, it's a nice phone, but it's at it's the end of the Android. day, still Android, and it's still stupid BS issues with Android. But there are BS issues with iPhone as well. I just find them, uh, there is, but I find them very far and few in between. I just remember constantly constantly dealing with android's bs all the time so he says android assistant is the name of it I android it assistant contest. android assistant because there i believe that there's some remnants from the update because this all started with an update Oh, that's very possible. That's why the good thing, if you can back up a couple of, if you can back up some pictures or videos to Google Drive and verify that they're backed up by logging in well, on if a computer. You, were here, Nick, you could show us how to do this. Uh, I, I, I mean, I know. I'm sorry. When are you going to be here, Nick? I'm not, I, don't, I don't know. No. You could be here in about two and a half hours if you leave now. Unfortunately, not today, but. 
but not today. All right. Anything else? I still don't have an electrician. Six weeks now. Mm. A guy did come over and look at it last night. We came up with a, a possible solution. He's going to give me a a quote on it tonight or tomorrow. You don't sound enthusiastic about that solution. Nobody wants to work anymore. It's not that they don't want to work. They're just cherry picking. Well, you know what? That's a two-way street. Yep. Yep. Yes, sir. I, I tend to not. If, I, if there's something I can do and I have the time, I will make an effort to do it, even if it's something I'm not thrilled with doing. There's some things I really like to do and other things it's like, eh, well. But there are people that literally cherry pick where, well, this is going to make the most bang for my buck. And uh, I can ignore all these other people because I know that they'll come running to me in the future. Yeah. Well, I will tell you that's fine. Running your business any way you choose, but not responding to text messages or phone calls is not the way to communicate to your client that I don't want to do that job. That, but that's if the shame is that's nothing new. It's just exacerbated now and made and uh, more highlighted by the fact that we have more ways to communicate and more way, more ways to ignore people. <laughs> well, yeah. you make a good point there, Spence. We had a guy. I'm just telling you, we had a guy we really liked. He helped my wife unload this table saw six weeks ago on his truck. He went and picked it up for it, helped her pick it out, made recommendation. We thought he was a good guy. He gave us a quote for remodeling the kitchen. Uh, he gave us, he said, he uh, gave us two figures. One, the, the higher of the two was, was we thought a reasonable figure when he came back with the actual quote, it was two and a half times higher than that. So that tells me number one, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Number two, he had, uh, uh, we had, he gave us a quote on actually modifying a bathroom which we thought the quote was reasonable. In fact, at one point we went back and forth on several design changes and we told him to go ahead. And then we never heard from him, never heard from him. He stopped returning text messages and phone calls. We finally last week spoke with our friend who recommended him. She's a brilliant business lady, very sharp, very knows, knows exactly what she's doing. And she said, well, how's he working for? Well, he's not, we can't get up with him. He won't return phone calls. We've moved on to other people. Well, let me talk to him. Do you want him still to do the work? Probably not. I don't want to deal with people who are undependable. Sure enough, about a few hours later, he calls. So you guys want me to come over and take a look at that bathroom? No, that's okay. That's the two-way street. No, he doesn't need our business. He's got more than yeah. he can possibly handle. But guess what? He's 32 years old. He's trying to grow the business. He's he's fat, dumb, and happy right now. But he's he probably doesn't remember 2008 very well. So I'm uh, not mad with him. I'm just disappointed. Yeah. I just don't, that's I'm old school. I, I have a good friend who's a multimillionaire and he said to Stop me, talking about me on the show. All right. Thank you. Um, he, he I'm just getting to the part about you. Uh, he, he said to me this past week, he said, you know what? I am sick and tired of my granddaughters texting me. If they don't want to talk to me by phone, I just as soon not interact with them, but I want them to pick up the phone and call me. You'd be, in pre you'd be having no, Mike, I call and talk to both of my grandparents at least twice a week. Well, I, I'm telling you that text messaging is useful. I use it. He uses it for the right purpose. But once you start going into this back and forth and back and forth and pick up the damn telephone. Right. It doesn't save time when you, you know do what? it like Our this. generation will be gone soon enough. Just endure us. And then nobody will ever talk verbally anymore. Everything will be hand signs and, uh, uh, you'll be in a, you'll be sitting across from each other in a restaurant, texting to each other. What do I you can't mean stand email? What do you mean will be? They're doing it messages. these days. Oh, well, I mean, that'll be all there is. Oh. Restaurants will be real quiet because the only thing you'll hear the, is the, the, uh, background music playing. You'll, or you'll text to the waiter to, to, you know, bring me my food. Could I have another glass of water? Could you fill my glass, please? And. Well, they've already got that. If you go you to, like, to a, now. like a TGI Fridays or a, a Red Robin, they've got the damn little the, uh, computer thing there. You can just have a kiosk on the table. Oh, yeah, like an eye. Oh, let's just pick out some dessert from this menu. Oh, this yeah. looks good. Okay. You know, we had to, of course, then again, this wasn't texting, but we went to a restaurant with some friends of ours about um, three weeks ago. 
we're sitting over in the corner where we were like it is that we like the spot we're sitting there talking all of a sudden the background music just start they turn it up like it's a sports bar which i hate i detest sports bars we're sitting there trying to talk and, and our waitress uh i guess we had already finished eating or what i don't know what anyway she wasn't coming by wasn't coming by the place was so crowded you could hardly walk in there and i look over my wife picks up her phone she's dialed the restaurant and they answer it and she says, we're sitting over here in the corner. We can't hear ourselves talk. Would you turn down the music? <laughs> and she did. They're just trying to be hip. Come on. I mean, it was not even good, but what? Oh, I, don't get I bet you it was great music. It sucked. It probably some of that crap you listened to. Mm. It was Kanye West's latest song they were playing. But you talk about technology. We went to a wedding yesterday and it, weddings are very different than when we grew up. We were very traditional. Now they're real hip and, and they got the, the preacher cutting jokes and making fun and laughing at mistakes and all that crap. We didn't do all that, but now that's normal. We're the ones that are odd person out at this point, but they had, they, if you think about it, it makes sense. They had a, a, a notice where you start walking into is it, it was outside when you walk in to be seated it said please do not take pictures with your cell phones at the wedding hmm. and people said why why are you doing that because we don't want the wedding pictures to be people holding their phones up taking pictures of the wedding party yeah that's um, interesting that, and that's that a fair a, request that was a major issue of my daughter and son-in-law's engagement party where this woman decided we're on this literally on a stage at a downtown bar where they're interacting with each other and the lady got up and stood behind them to record with her ipad standing and so she's oh. in the background of every picture oh it was like well what do you how do you and this it was like the crazy aunt and uh, <laughs> that happened at my daughter's funeral the, the guy's wife who took the video was in in every shot and i mean she's a sweet lady and i i was glad for them to do it but but it just i mean you sit there you can sit see they're sitting here in every shot and it's somebody should have realized it and said step back to uh, two steps but, we um i remember every once in a while we'd have that when i was working for the wedding photographer and um luckily he would photograph the room beforehand so <laughs> quite frequently no not quite frequently every once in a while it would we'd have a situation like that and because the uh most of the wedding pack just came with a wedding book where you select like 50 or 60 pictures to be put inside of a book you do some retouching you don't retouch you know the five thousand pictures but you do the 50 or 60 they like mm. and um you know i'd be tasked with removing again the stupid lady on her ipad you know <laughs> standing up and taking up three quarters of the frame so, hey guys, I got to run. I got to go walk before it gets too hot. I'm being requested now. All righty. All right. Yeah, it's happy time. I mean, we need Mother's Day. Anything else? Happy Mother. Yeah, say Happy Mother's Day. Anything else, guys? No, sir. Here. All right. So let's end this. Uh, thanks, Mike, Spence, Nick, everybody in the chat. Uh, happy Mother's Day. And good morning, Kathy, Hannah, Nabil, Mac, Norm, Katie, and Dana. Thanks, everybody, for tuning to Computers 2K Now. We hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something from our time together. Remember to practice safe computing. Back up your hard drive and update your virus scanner. We'll be back here next Sunday at 9, but you can always reach us at Computers2KNow.com. Uh, while you're at it, like us on Facebook. Follow us on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Nick, you're doing a show tonight? Yes, that's uh, my plan. Tonight at 7, Nick is hosting Against the Norm on Wilmington's Big Talker 106.7. And you, everybody anywhere around the world can listen to it on TuneIn. See you next week, guys. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it 
in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast software, streaminggear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.